So I'm going to talk about some intermediate macroeconomic concepts. Uh, I'm going to make a series of six videos that lay out some of the main ideas, the main variables, and then some models that determine them. Same time, I'm going to talk about what makes intermediate macroeconomics intermediate, right? So I assume you already know what macroeconomics is, which is economics of the entire economy. It's usually aggregate. An economy as a whole, the thing that makes it intermediate is that it's in between a principles level course, which might give you the concepts and some basic models, and then more advanced courses, which might have things like statistical analysis, or for the most part, some sort of calculus. Um, a lot of times, uh, higher level courses will do the same things using systems of equations, whether they're linear equations or, uh, you know, calculus, a lot of times for the higher level stuff. But here we're going to do intermediate, which is a little more basic, and we're going to determine these variables uh, graphically, right? So you could make an equation into a graph by, you know, plotting the points, um, and but there's going to be no equations to solve. The solutions will be uh, basically looking where the points meet, and then if you move the equations, you move the points, it's the same thing as changing numbers in a higher level model, right? So uh, I'm going to start off talking about the key variables in intermediate macroeconomics. This goes back to some older Keynesian stuff. There's some papers from the 50s that lay this out, but this is how I do it, right? And then one of the things where we can do it, uh, we can talk about uh, <clears throat> how these are determined in the closed and the open economy, right? So the big four, I determine them, or at least I name them as Y, P, R, and N. Y is GDP, it's some sort of income or output aggregate level production in the economy. P is the price level. This is, again, aggregate prices in the economy. Uh, we use some sort of CPI or some you know, personal consumption expenditures or something like that. GDP deflator is another good one, but it's aggregate prices in the economy. R, I call it R, sometimes people call it I, but I always call it R. That's the interest rate, right, which is the price of capital. It is uh, the, related to the marginal productivity of capital. Um, it also can be the price of bonds and money you know, in a different context. And then N, is, sometimes this is L, but I call it N. This is the labor force, it's the employment rate, right? So if you're managing the macro economy, you're looking at maintaining production at a high level, keeping prices low. The interest rate, it can be determined in the market, but oftentimes it is set as a result of policy by the Fed or the central bank. But again, if you're a macro economist uh, in terms of policy, you'd care about the employment rate, right? So think back to when macroeconomics became a discipline. During the Great Depression, the employment rate was important because of the fact that you know there's high unemployment, workers were important. They can they vote, they have political concerns, as well as the social concerns of having no job. So, those are the four main macro variables. They're simultaneously determined in different markets. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk those out. We'll lay them out separately and do them finally as a system. In the open economy, which I'll talk about, this is an economy that's open to trade and capital flows. You can have the current account, which is savings minus investment. It's, it's basically international lending or borrowing. And you can say what determines the size of the current account. So, example, the, the United States has a current account deficit. Um, and then different policies can cause the deficit to grow or shrink. And then the exchange rate, again, is the price of currency in the you know, two-country context. And that is uh, determined in a uh, the model that I lay out using interest rate parity and stuff. I usually save that for int um, international finance, right? So uh, these are the two open economy variables. But we can talk about the closed economy starting out, right? There are some other variables that we talk about as well. W is wages, so we can talk about wages rising in the United States, and that's good for workers. The level of consumption, which is you know consumer spending, household spending is you know part of GDP. Savings, which is the a proportion or the part of income that is not spent or consumed. I investment. This is basically the change in capital stock. It's business spending on equipment and machinery and, and buildings. And then K again is the capital stock. Um, that's just the amount of the those buildings, right? So these are a little bit less important, but we do determine them in various models in macroeconomics, right? So the models, again, that we're going to use an intermediate macro, we're going to use the goods market, the labor market, and the money market simultaneously. Um, and it's important to note that a change in one market will lead to, to spillovers in the other, right? So if there's an increase in the spending on goods, for example, that might mean more workers are required or more money is needed to buy those goods. So one change in one market will actually lead to shifts in the other. So you can shift one curve, and this is going to be a number of graphs all on one sheet or one, one page, and they'll be simultaneously determining the the main variables a Y, P, and R. Okay, and so uh, the IS, which is uh, an LM, are actually the intermediate macro model that they usually see, the IS LM model, as well as you might have seen in, in principles context, ASAD. IS and AD are both the goods market. Labor market can determine the AS curve, the aggregate supply curve, and then the money market. LM stands for liquidity money. 
Um, this is uh, basically determines the interest rate, but it also determines GDP simultaneously. So we'll combine these, and again, you have three graphs together and show what happens if you change those. Um, under, underneath, or sort of behind the scenes, you can have the bond market, which is related to the money market. Uh, demand for bonds affects demand for money. Then there's also the foreign exchange market, which uh, I talk about in terms of interest rate parity, and again, I do that in international finance. But uh, you talk about uh, foreign exchange markets driving the interest rate, but you don't have to draw those. You can actually add those on, but the main ones here, you're going to have ISLM, ASAD, and then uh, together you'll get those three markets. So I keep it to two graphs together. You could have the labor market as the NSND market, but I kind of do it a little bit differently. So I can do multiple markets with three curves. It's, it's, it's actually four, but one is doubled. So ISLM gives you output and interest rates. It gives you goods and money. And then ASAD gives you prices and output. Right, so that's prices, output, and interest rates, three of the four. And um, so ISLM, ASAD gives you three of the four variables. And then I kind of combined uh, the fourth variable, besides Y, P, and R, I had N um, showing you that it's part of the production function. Right? So two graphs with four curves gives us three variables. And then we can assume that the fourth variable is related. Right? Um, and so through the lectures that I'm going to do, we start out with the labor market, the NSND model, which is the wage rate and the amount of employment. The savings investment or the SI curve gives us the interest rate, and you can also use it in the open economy to give the current account. ISLM, as I mentioned before, gives you the interest rate and output simultaneously. ASAD gives you prices and output simultaneously. All right, so of Y, P, R, and N, three of these are given, and then the fourth you could bring in a little more complicated, but I, I show you in terms of derived demand and the production function. All right, uh, separately for international finance class, I do the IRP, the interest rate parity model, for the exchange rate, and then I bring exchange rate and output together with the DDAA model. All right, so in the five lectures that follow, I'm going to do NS and ND. I'm going to give you the SA model, excuse me, SI model for the closed economy and then for the open economy. Um, fourth, I'll do the uh, ISLM model, just sort of a setup, and then I can show you the system in the final slides. So that's the setup. Uh, four variables in the closed economy, two in the open economy, which I kind of don't talk about, so we're going to focus on those four. We're going to lay out uh, three main models that derive them and then talk about them as a system at the end.